section 4.1 extreme values of functions on a closed interval this chapter is uh, chapter 4 which is application of derivatives first thing let f be a function with domain d then f has an absolute maximum value on that domain at point c if the value of the function at c is always greater or equal to you know uh, compared to all other values of that function in that domain that's called absolute maximum value which is also called largest value of that function absolute minimum means it's the smallest value of that function in that domain so uh, the value at c is called absolute minimum if this this value is always less or equal to all the values you know in that domain so look at the you know some possibility here for the first graph as you can see that this is the graph of parabola on, on the domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity as you go from left to right the minimum value of this function exists which is at zero so zero is the minimum value which is also which is also called absolute minimum or the you know the smallest value of the function uh, at zero and there is no absolute maximum value because the value you know the graph is keep going up so for the first one there is absolute minimum here but no absolute maximum for the second one we are just restricting our domain from uh, you know instead of uh, starting from negative infinity to positive infinity we're just focusing on 0 to 2 so this is the first point and this is the last point and as you can see that this is this absolute minimum value and this is the absolute maximum value for this function on this domain the you know this one again we're focusing on interval 0 comma 2 where 0 is not included so because 0 is not included that is open circle and then the value goes up to point 2 which is uh, the value 4 at 2 the value of the function is 4 so as you can see that this graph has absolute maximum value at 2 and the value itself is 4 but for the minimum value there is an open circle and what comes right after that we don't know about that thing that's why the absolute maximum only possible for this one and there is no absolute minimum the last one if we take uh, the value of the very same function on the open interval from 0 to 2 there is no absolute maximum and no absolute minimum because as you as we focus on this graph you can see that the absolute maximum should be right before uh, the value of the function at 2 but we don't know what comes right before the value of the function at 2 because so there is no maximum or no minimum so based on where you are focusing uh, how you are defining your function on which domain you might have absolute value uh, absolute maximum value or absolute minimum value or sometimes just one of them uh, you know is possible the extreme value theorem there is a one theorem it says if f is continuous on closed interval so remember this is the uh, you know um, the, this is the thing you have to focus on closed interval if a function is defined which is continuous function on closed interval then f attains both an absolute maximum value let's say that is capital m and an absolute minimum value let's say that is a small m uh, and then the rest of the value of that function would be you know uh, in between that maximum or minimum value so what this theorem says this theorem is that uh, that extreme value theorem if we have continuous function so function you know that function has to be continuous and number two it has to define on a close interval if that is the case then we always have absolute maximum or absolute minimum value of that function possible so let's see some of the examples here so the first one if you see here the graph uh, in this graph as you can see that the function is defined from point a to point b this is the domain from a to b and then this point this value capital m is the maximum value which is the absolute maximum value of this function and this small m is the absolute minimum value of the function and both of them are inside the domain and so in, at interior points if you go to the second example here 
you know your maximum and minimum value this is the maximum value and this is the minimum value I'm talking about the absolute maximum or absolute minimum and they are at you know uh, at endpoints here the third one the absolute minimum is at uh, you know left endpoint but the absolute maximum is uh, is at in a, you know an interior points okay and fourth one the absolute minimum is uh, at interior points and then absolute maximum is at uh, the right end point so we might have different kind of situation based on you know um, you know different kind of uh, if your function is continuous and that is defined on a closed interval always we should be able to find out the absolute many minimum and absolute maximum value of the function but we might have different situation like this so let's see one more example here this function is defined from 0 to 1 but the value of the function at 1 is 0 itself so this function is actually not continuous because you see the break here uh, if the if you see there is a break then that is not continuous so this function does not have absolute maximum value because it does not satisfy uh, the condition of the extreme value theorem okay the extreme value theorem so to have absolute value uh, absolute maximum or minimum value both available for the continue the function should be continuous function and it should be defined on closed interval but here this function is not continuous function let's look at one example sketch the graph of the following function the function is got given which is y equals 6 times sine x and then domain is given which is uh, open interval so first of all to analyze this graph or to talk about this problem we should know the graph of sine x function sine function so the graph of sine function is if you start from 0 and go up to 2 pi the graph of sine x looks like this you know at 0 it's a 0 at pi over 2 it's a 1 at, at pi it's a 0 at uh, 3 pi over 2 it's a negative 1 negative 1 at 2 pi it's 0 so this is the graph of sine x here we're looking for the graph of 6 times sine x so whatever value of y you see here you just have to multiply that by 6 but one more thing here the domain does not include 0 and 2 pi so we cannot include this in points so there should be open circle here so rest of the value uses uses multiply the y coordinate by 6 so for example at pi over 2 the value should be instead of 1 it should be 6 because you are multiplying the sine x by 6 uh, at pi 0 times 6 is 0 at 3 pi over 2 instead of negative 1 the value should be negative 6 so this is the graph of sine x on you know 0 to 2 pi not including 0 and 2 pi now these are the options we have available for the graph of y equals 6 sin x and we already know that at in points 0 and 2 pi the value would be you know uh, there is no value so there should be a hole so uh, you know find out the graph which has hole at 0 and 2 pi so these are the two graph which you see you know where you see the hole at 0 and 2 pi but the nature of the graph should be looked like this so first goes up and then uh, so as you can see that this is the right graph okay now determine whether the function has any absolute extreme values on its domain so look at the gra graph this is the right answer and uh, you know as you can see that this is the extreme um, maximum which is absolute maximum and you, this is the absolute minimum value so that is possible so one of the option we have to choose where both absolute maximum and minimum are possible the function has an absolute maximum at x equal which is pi over 2 and then function has the absolute minimum at x equal 3 pi over 2 and uh, one more time the, there is another question explain the results in term of extreme value theorem so if you go back to the extreme value theorem it says that if function is continuous on the closed interval then there should be an extreme maximum uh, absolute maximum and absolute minimum possible on that interval but here we took uh, you know the open interval but still there is an absolute maximum and absolute minimum so let's read uh, the options we have given here since the function is not continuous but that's not true statement because this function is continuous there is no gapping there is no jump so that statement is uh, not true let's go to the next one 
since the function f is continuous on close interval uh, but that is not close interval that's open interval so let's go to the next step next uh, option since the function is continuous on an open interval it may or may not have the absolute external values on its domain this is the statement we can generalize from external value theorem but for this particular problem we do have extreme maximum and ex extreme, extreme minimum value but this is the only suitable statement we can pick from you know this form okay okay so sometime instead of uh, you know uh, um, you know uh, getting absolute maximum or absolute minimum we might have local maximum or local minimum local means instead of focusing on whole interval uh, whole domain for example let's say this is the domain of the function the absolute maximum means the largest value of the function on this domain absolute minimum means the smallest value of the function on this domain local maximum means let's say for example this is the graph you see this is the graph for example then as you can see that this point this point the value of the function at this point is greater than the value comes before and comes after that is called local maximum the value of the function at this point here is smallest compared to the the value just before that and just after that that's why it's called local minimum so this this kind of values are called local max or local min okay a function f has a local maximum value at c within its domain d if the value of the function at that point c is greater or equal to f of x for all x in d lying in some open interval containing c so what they are saying is this d we are just focusing on some small interval inside this whole big d instead of focusing on from a to b we're just focusing on a small interval nearby that point so always compare the value of the function just before and after and then if it's greater then that's called local maximum if it's less that's called if it's smaller then that's called local minimum okay so here's the one uh, graph here as you can see that this is the graph of a function this is our absolute maximum value and this is our absolute minimum value because that's the largest value on this domain and this is the smallest value on this domain but this point is called local maximum because the value of the function at this point here is greater than the previous value of the function and then after uh, you know whatever comes after that point you know the value of the function just right after that value so that's why it's a local maximum this is local minimum and this is local minimum because there is nothing comes right after that so you don't have to compare if that is not inside the domain but this is smaller than the value just come before that you know that value so there is a one test called the first derivative uh, test for finding the you know um, uh, the local maximum or local minimum value the first derivative theorem for local extreme values if f has a local maximum or minimum value at an interior point c interior point c of its domain and if f prime is defined at c then the derivative of the function at that point would be zero so remember to have a local maximum or local minimum always the graph at that point look like this okay this is local maximum and this is local minimum and at that point if you try to draw a tangent line that tangent line would be always a horizontal line that's why the derivative of that function at that point is zero because that's the slope of the tangent line at that point so um there is a one definition and that's a very very important definition that's called critical point an interior point of the domain of a function f where the derivative of the function is zero or sometime it's undefined is called critical point so if you have given a function f of x you find the derivative of the function and there are two different situations you might have one is the derivative of function is zero or the derivative of function is undefined in at those points in both situation those points are called critical points you know either it happens uh, you know the first one or the derivative does not exist at that point you know those kind of points are called critical point and these points are very important for finding uh, you know uh, 
the uh, the extreme value extreme value means largest value and then smallest value and that comes from this rule finding the absolute extrema of a continuous function f on a finite close interval so there is a function f of x that's defined on close interval a to b for example and this function is continuous function then to find out the absolute uh, you know maximum value or absolute minimum value what we need to do is we need to first find out all critical points so we can find out the all critical points by finding the derivative of that function and if uh, and equate with zero by solving that equation it will help us to find the uh, critical points and sometime maybe the derivative doesn't exist that also tell us the critical points so first of all if you have given a function continuous function on the close interval find out the critical points find out the value of the function at those critical points find out the value of the function at in points and compare them wherever you know the largest value among them would be the absolute maximum value of the function on that interval and the smallest value would be uh, the you know absolute minimum value of the function at that interval i'm going to show you one example here but before that sometimes you might have situation like this this graph doesn't have absolute maximum or absolute minimum though this is continuous function but we are not focusing we are not making it on close interval okay it's not on the close interval the same goes here there is no absolute maximum or extra absolute minimum because uh, the you know the domain is not closed the domain is everything from negative infinity to positive infinity so let's look at one example here determine all critical points for the function remember to find the critical points you need to find the derivative of the function if it exists if it does not exist then that means uh, you know that point is the critical point if it exists then equate that derivative with zero and solve for x so in this case if we find the derivative by using the power rule it would be 12x minus 6x squared now we equate this derivative with zero which is uh, which gives us quadratic equation now we need to solve by factoring the greatest common factor here and uh, that will be uh, it will give us two different options 6x equals 0 or 2 minus x equals 0 if we solve for x x equal to 0 and x equal to 2 so these are the two points where the derivative of this function is 0 so these two points are called critical points okay remember Critical point means an interior point of the domain of the function f, where f prime is a zero or undefined is a critical point of that function. So in this case, we found, uh, you know, the two points uh, x equal to zero and x equal to two, where the derivative of the function is zero. That's why these two points are critical points. So now, by using the critical points, we can find out the extreme maximum or extreme minimum value of function like this. So here. First of all, you have given a function. Find out the critical points, critical points. So that means uh, find out the derivative of this function, which is a uh, 2x, and then equate this derivative with 0. So that means 2x equals 0. Solve for x, and that will give you the critical points. Critical point, you might have one point or more than one. Now, if you try to find out the absolute extreme value, that means you have to follow these three steps the first one find all the critical points evaluate the value of the function at those critical points and in points so there is just only one critical point so we need to evaluate the value of the function at zero which is basically zero minus 16 because x is zero so that is basically negative 16 and now find out the value of the function at in point here you can see that in point is negative 5 and then positive 4 so plug x equal to negative 5 here which is 25 minus 16 because negative x negative 5 square means 25 which is uh, 9 and this is uh, 4 square minus 16 which is 0 so now we just have to compare three of them so wherever you see the largest value that is the absolute maximum value so which is this one wherever you see the smallest value that is the absolute minimum value so the absolute maximum value is uh, 9 and then absolute minimum value is negative 16 and uh, you get the absolute maximum value at negative 5 
and you get the absolute minimum value at zero. Okay. Then the graph of the function. You this is just uh, you know uh, as you can see that uh, this is the graph of the parabola and shifting 16 units down. So uh, 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 this would be uh, like this. But we have to focus from negative five negative 5 uh, to positive 4 so negative 5 is here positive 4 is here and at 0 this is uh, this is negative 16 so this is the value at negative 5 that would be positive 9 so this is the graph okay and I plot the graph by using the graph of parabola x square and setting it 16 unit down from negative 5 to positive 4 we just have to focus from here to here okay